Well, good evening, and uh, this is Blue, and today's uh, topic is about manifesting success. And with the new year upon us, uh, it's a great time to think over our, our lives over the past year uh, and the things that we've gone through, our successes, you know, achievements, and things that didn't go as well as we'd like. And the beauty about it being a new year is that it's a new opportunity to start anew. I know a lot of us um, will uh, have what they call New Year's resolutions, and we often put them out there, but hey, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. doesn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's important to me is that we understand that we have the ability to manifest what we need in our lives. Um, I, I just to kind of give some, some um, you know, some uh, information about why I do this. You know, I, I believe and I feel and I know that I have, you know, been blessed by spirit and the ancestors and um, my spirit family and Arisha's with a certain set of gifts. Um, that, um, you know, a lot of people haven't discovered yet. I believe that everyone has their own sets of, set of gifts and I've been blessed to really engage mine. Um, I know that I cannot let those gifts go to waste because if you don't use it, you will lose it. Um, and um, I don't want that to happen. And um, I, I would want someone that was able to help you know, uh, and had the gifts to be able to stretch further than I could to help me. And so I'm accountable for my growth in spirit by helping, helping others. That's what edifies me. Um, so what is manifesting? And before I go into this, I want to encourage you to um, write down what piques your interest. Mm -hmm. And if there's something that you say, hey, I, I want you to go deeper on that, then I can find a way to put that in my um, schedule. Oh, we've got somebody joining. I can find a way to put that into my schedule um, to do yet another class uh, uh, on that or another session on that. So feel free to, yes, um, write down anything that piques your interest. Welcome, mm -hmm. Tatiana. Uh, we're just- Hi. Hello, we're just beginning. Okay. So feel free to um, write down anything that uh, piques your interest, any questions you might have, as well as uh, anything that you would like for me to go deeper in, deeper on in a later time. So um, the question now becomes, what is manifesting? So let's think about when we were kids. And when mm -hmm. we were kids, we would um, have our birthday cakes and they would put candles on the birthday cake. And what would they tell us to do? Make a wish. And do what? Um, You're right. Make a, make a wish, yes. Yep, make a wish and blow out the candles. So it went with thoughts and then it went with action, right? Yes. And we were always taught to believe that that was an opportunity to make something that we really want to happen in our lives. Um, so manifesting is exactly that. It is putting thought to action to bring it about into our lives. Now, it's important to understand that you deserve to be able to manifest things in your life. You were built and equipped with the things that you need to manifest things in your life. And you have the right to do it. You absolutely have the right to do it. And beyond that, your manifesting today can literally have generational effects on your family for generations to come. Uh, I know we often hear about generational curses where they're generational blessings too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are some of us who have been hand chosen and, and pulled out and set apart and sanctified to, be, to hold that banner, to hold that responsibility. I don't even want to call it a responsibility because it's a blessing um, to be able to impact the lives of others positively down the road for, for lifetimes to come. 
So before I go any deeper, do you have any questions or thoughts about anything that I've shared so far? Because this is a conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, my question was, you know, like you, you mentioned the, um, the birthday when you were younger, uh -huh. how we were told to make a wish and then blow out the candle. So it's um, thoughts, basically you think about something and then you take action to make the wish come true. Right. And it kind of, so that's, um, it, it, I think, you know, I agree with that. It goes uh, kind of hand in hand to, it's not just to think about something, you know, it's, it's the actions that go with it. And I agree with that, you know, it, it's so simple, you know, just today we had a birthday and uh, for someone who was older and it was, you know, make a wish and then blow the candle. And then it's, uh, it's, yep. it's the same um, principle, really. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And uh, I'm glad that you, you, you're you uh, commenting on that. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper in that too and where that kind of comes from. And I also wanna welcome Alicia who's joined us. We're just getting started, Alicia. Feel free to um, you know, take any notes or write down something that uh, you'd like for me to go deeper on. I'll try to get a, 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 a session together to expand on that. Um, so what we just what we just defined is what is manifesting, and I gave um, the analogy of the birthday cake and how we were taught to not only blow out uh, make a wish, but they told us to blow out the candle. So there was the thought, and then there was the, was the action. And then I explained why it was important that it that you deserve it and that you have the right to do it, and you can also have a positive generational effect where you your what you manifest today can positively if affect generations down the road so now let's go into how to manifest all right so right off the jump you want to make sure that you have the tools to do this and i can already assure you and affirm that you already have the tools to do this because what you need is simply your mind, your heart, your soul, the will, the faith, and your mouth. And if you have those things, which we know you all do, we all do, you are already equipped to manifest whatever your will is into your lives. So that being said, there are ways to amplify manifestations. Um, uh, some ways that you can amplify your intentions and is by adding certain things or different things to what you're asking for. And what I want to share with you is that everything in this universe has an energy that is subscribed to it that it comes with energy and that energy can be a good energy. That energy could be a bad energy. It could be a neutral, but it certainly has, everything has a vibration. Everything has an energy. Now I'll even take it to the point of saying something as inanimate as a rock, right? Well, that rock just didn't get here by itself. It took pressure to make that rock. That rock had to be created and in creation, it takes energy. So every single thing has a vibration of its own, seen and unseen. So amplifying your, your intentions, uh, candles, you often, you know, we all know that candles, we just talked about that. And the reason why, you know, candles can help is because it's the epitome of energy. You've got fire attached to that energy. Mm -hmm. And fire both creates and destroys, you know? Everything has a yin and a yang. Water, it creates and it destroys. Um, water is also uh, significant because water carries energy. Think about when, probably won't remember, but 
think about the thought, the idea or the action that when we were in our mother's womb, we were in uh, amniotic fluid, water, and we were able to live, survive, grow, and thrive underwater, submerged in water until that water broke and then wow. we came through, right? Wow. So you understand the power of water? Uh, part of re water retains memory. Water, you can speak to water and speak your intentions into water and then drink it. Water, I set water next to my bed. When I need to have clarity on a dream or, or uh, if I need to get a message, or for, water also serves as a gateway, just like with fire. I have an altar in my home and I think there's a picture up uh, of a little small piece of it. And on your altar, you wanna make sure you have all of these elements, water, fire, uh, earth, which could be some dirt or, or uh, even some ashes or something like that. Um, and uh, water, earth, thinking, water, earth, fire, air, uh, I have, you know, the air is already there, but you can charge your air by um, burning some incense or burning uh, some sage or palo santo. Um, and with water, it also, you can speak to water and speak your intentions into this water, like for something that you needed to do in your body. And even into your mind and ingest that water. I have water on my altar and that's where I was going because just in the same way that we pass through water to get here, mm -hmm. our ancestors can pass through water to get here. Mm -hmm. Our great mother, uh, Mother Aye Moja, you know, she's the, she's the great mother, the great fish, the great water. And um, of course, um, who is it? Uh, and this is for those who practice Ifa, which I do. Uh, also in Ifa, um, there's uh, the beloved, also beloved Oshun, you know, the, the goddess of, there you go, uh, goddess of those rivers, sweet waters. So water is, is very important with, you know, creating things and, and bringing things about and for passage. You know, you get from one place to another, you know, passing through water. Um, you can use these things to amplify your intentions. Another thing, um, just nature in and of itself, uh, herbs, oils, gems, crystals, all of them carry a vibration. And it's, you know, the process of learning what vibration each item carries. Um, we know that, um, Salt, for instance, um, can, you know, do a lot of, of banning uh, or keeping uh, things away. We know that um, what allspice uh, and things like that can bring about uh, help with divination and uh, just there's so many. I mean, here at home, because I do a lot of this work for people who need that, um, I, I have a ton of it here. Uh, but the beauty is that you get to learn what different things can help uh, fortify in your intentions process. Mm -hmm. Have you all had any uh, experience with working with any of these things that I've mentioned? Not me. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Nicole? Um, yes, I have. Um, I heard that with the water, um, there was a... I think a Japanese scientist who did an experiment with water and, and I've done it too. Yeah. Um, when you, you speak. Negatively. Um, you speak, yes. To, yep. I did it with two glasses of water. One was negative and the other one were positive words, positive affirmations and the other one was negative words and affirmations. And I put those two glasses of water in the freezer and the next day in the morning, yep. the, they look different. Yes. The ice looked different. 
Yes. And it was amazing. Yes, indeed. And it, that, it was. that's definitely a testament to the power of energy, the power of our words, and the power of water. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other thing? Uh, so the other thing that I, you know, also would encourage uh, that you can consider is drumming. If you, you don't even have to be uh, a drummer or percussionist per se, but if you just have you know, a little, a little drum or a little something, tambourine, whatever, and you're just talking it out and you're just drumming as you're going along. Well, every time you hit that drum, you're creating energy and you've got those waves. Uh-huh. What, uh, what you say in the chat, Dr. Masaru Imoto perform extensive studies, research with water and crystals. Absolutely. Thank you. And so um, in drumming, um, it's, it's, it's an experience because you know, you're making your the action that you're making is making a vibration, which also is affecting the waves and making a sound, and all of those things um, as you speak over them. You know, it just kind of mm -hmm. works all in in sync. So, Alicia, you got your hand raised. You don't have to have your hand raised. You can just join in. What you got? Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here. This is Allie. I could not in oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, dear. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love working with the elements. I, I also love working with um, uh, crystals, rocks in general. Um, I mm -hmm. love working with plant materials. I love yes. working with sound healing, uh, vibronics. Mm -hmm. I love working with um, fragrance. So it can be through resin and what have you, mm -hmm. um, burning sage, um, doing things like smudging. Yep. And um, I love my bells, my crystals and um, anything to affect positive change with energy and vibration so that's awesome mm -hmm. awesome i love when i hear those good light workers pulling through <laughs> you know that's our right. own kind that's right that's right <laughs> and, and my yeah. thing is that all of us can level to that it's, it's just a matter of knowing yeah and it has truly changed my life so Welcome, and I'm just I'm just glad that you're a part of this family, and, and we, we all edify each other. I look forward to learning from you all as well. Oh, thank you so much. This the the sentiments are completely mutual, <laughs> and um, I also wanted to mention I love also working with the subtle energies that are even inherent in essential oils. Yeah, and so I I love um, aromatherapy and intention there's there's so much that one can say about the power of intention as well so thank you mm -hmm. i'll tell you um a situation that happened to me many mm -hmm. years ago and i was married and, and i was really it was a very rough marriage mm -hmm. and um i remember i was i was praying so hard and i was just crying and mm -hmm. you know i just was in a state of despair that i just hadn't been in before in my life i've never mm -hmm. cried out to spirit like mm -hmm. i did before Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, mm -hmm. I smelled the sweetest fragrance right. that I have ever smelled in my life. And I've been chasing it ever since. I mm -hmm. believe you. I've had that happen. Yes. Yeah. And so the very next, the next day, my mm -hmm. friend, she uh, knew a lady from church and she had the gift of, uh, of uh, a vision and, and prophecy mm -hmm. and, and sight and she began to pray with me and pray over me and she began to pray in the spirit. Mm. And all of a sudden, and I've never met this woman, never talked mm. to her, never seen her. All of a sudden, it, while she was in her flow, yeah. she says to me, she said, and, and dear father, let's let her know that that sweet smell that she smelled <gasps> yet yesterday, that was your presence, your very presence in the room. I lost it. I lost it. I have been chasing that fragrance ever since. And I'll never forget it. I will wow. never forget it. So Beautiful. thank you for sharing that. That's absolutely. So affirming. I, got, I got chills too, right? I, I got chills too. <laughs> Okay. I want to smell that when I smell it, I'm going to know what that is. And I'm just mm -hmm. going to go ballistic. Mm -hmm. All right. So we talked about drumming and we talked about dancing. I know that when, when I am 
trying to manifest something through, I'm raising my vibrations by dancing mm-hmm. because dancing, you know, mm-hmm. it, 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 it charges your energy. You're, you're, you know, dancing your way through and praying your way through. And it just causes your body just to get into that whole vibration. Um, chanting. Um, I'm, I'm big about, mm-hmm. about chanting, chanting and speaking things out. And, you know, I know I, I heard one the other day and it was like, uh, how did it go? Uh, ching 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 goes the money tree and every time it chings money comes to me it all comes together so abundantly from the top left right and up under me wave 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 I'm a money wave money earned money earned money saved money in and out plus money something debt 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 all debt is paid and it stayed with me because it was by I was vibing so hard to it I got the dancing with it and the whole nine it was great so yes Chanting, yes, it's beautiful, beautiful. I see the chat, I see the chat. Um, another thing, let's see, what else do I have on here? And then we're gonna switch gears here. Um, uh, be, um, yes, astrology. Um, I'm, I'm so, so, um, I embrace astrology so much because let's think about it. In the heavens above the firmament, we have a vast space that goes on forever with bodies that were created. Uh, yeah, I will share that one with the money trade to you guys because uh, it's on YouTube. So yeah, it's, um, and, and if you think about what the Bible says, and just to let you know, I grew up Pentecostal, but however, I still hold on to those things, but now I've moved into more of a spiritual space, but I still rely on other religions and the one that I was raised in, I pull the good things out of those. But in the Bible, and you'll hear me reference things from there because that's what I grew up in. Um, uh, there was the, 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 the phrase or the passage that said how God knew the name of each and every star. Well, if he knows the name, he or she, uh, they know the name of every star, then there has to be some importance to it. It's not up there for any reason. So uh, the the planetary movements um, and stuff like that, it plays a lot into how we function down here. Like when those retrogrades and stuff come, I feel it every time. Mm Uh, Mercury retrograde tears me up that we're in this mm-hmm. Venus retrograde right now. And I'm, I'm working through that. Um, everything that goes on in the heavens affects us as above, so below. Um, and I'm sorry that you guys keep hearing that. I'm waiting for a, a text to come through to let someone in. Um, and when that comes through, then I'll be able to turn those alerts off. Um, So, and let's talk about like the moon, for example, um, the, the moon, the moon is responsible for the tides on the earth. It, it, it causes the high tide. It causes the low tide. So let's think about our bodies. Yes. Numerology. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Numerology, uh, those synchronizations and so forth. Absolutely. Um, so let's think about the moon If it controls the tides and this, that, and the third, how high they are, how low they are, how the, how the water moves. We are 90 some odd percent water. If it's going to affect the water on the earth, why wouldn't it affect us? I'll take it a step further. My mom used to work in a place, uh, for the mentally ill and mentally, uh, disabled. Uh, or, or, or challenged. And so they would chart whenever there was a full moon because they realized that when the full moon happened, it was one of their harder nights because there was a lot more activity. They were a lot more active mm. than normal. Um, the word lunatic, Luna means moon. So they call people who they deemed as crazy, yes. Um, they um, called them lunatics because they understood how the moon would impact them. Yep, loonies. (laughs) 
Um, mm -hmm. So the question I see that's come up is how do oracles factor into this? Um, I believe that oracles factor in the same way. Um, I feel that oracles also have almost a seventh sense of things as well. It's, it's almost like being on like a, 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 a different, I want to say echelon or level uh, of understanding and seeing the hidden things and being able to, you know, effectively communicate. Uh, I think they're highly, highly sensitive uh, oracles. Uh, is that's that's just a whole other realm that I feel that all of us still have a, the ability to get to that that level. It's just a matter of asking spirit to level you up. I'll give you an example. Um, when I was going through this change, this metamorphosis that I've gone through. Um, and I use Oracle cards as stuff as well as my tarot too. Um, when I was going through this, this metamorphosis and I was really enjoying the journey and I went to spirit in prayer and I said, spirit, I want to go higher. I want to go higher. I want to go higher. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced. I want to go higher. And about two nights after that, you know how you lay down and you get ready to go to sleep and you sleep but you're not quite sleep, but you sleep. Well, I was going into that moment and all of a sudden I literally felt the energy of spirit come into the room. And in my spiritual eye, though my eyes are closed and I'm sleeping, I can see the room. I can see myself laying down. I see, I'm seeing things in first person. I'm seeing this and I'm seeing the energy, not so much in a physical form, but I can see, see it with my spiritual eye. And all I hear is, are you ready? And I said, yes, I'm ready. And all of a sudden, my body sits up on the edge of the bed. And I've only told a few people this. My body sits up in the edge of the bed. And after I sit up on the edge of the bed, I'm lifted up. So now I'm hovering over the floor for about like five or six inches and I'm freaking out because I'm and freaking out in a good way because I'm excited. I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh. And in this, in this, in this state that I'm in, I start whizzing myself from the, from the dresser to the table that's in my room, back to the bed. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I hear in the spirit and I, I feel and sense in the spirit how, how, how spirit is almost laughing at me because they're, they're seeing the joy that's coming from me about it and me having this experience. And then finally, I felt myself go back to that bed, sit down on that bed like I was, and, and I laid back down, back into my sleep. And so I woke up from that dream running around the place. I called my other friend, you know, who's a, a, a spiritual priestess going ballistic and telling her about it. And she said, you've just been leveled up. I said, oh my God, that was my prayer. Hold on, I need to open my door. Hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so um, that, that is the example that I want to give to you is that if you, in the Bible, it also says he who asks for wisdom, he gives it and gives it freely, you know, so never, never be afraid to ask for wisdom, never be afraid to ask to be leveled up, you know, and ask to be ready to be leveled up. And, um, I just want to make sure that I share that with you, uh, that you are able, you know, to do that. And so I'm looking at the chat and I'm laughing. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing um, I have, I can't even read my own writing. Oh, yes. Uh, you can use the Bible uh, mm -hmm. in manifesting or any other religious work. I can only speak to the Bible right now because that's what's coming to head right now. But there are other works that have great things that helps you manifest, you know, because in the Bible, it has uh, a lot of instructions on how to manifest 
uh, things. You know, like it said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Well, what does that mean? Whatever you think that you are or whatever you think that you can do, then that's what it says in the Bible that you can do and be exactly that. So, and think about the story about Lazarus, you know, uh, when he went to go put, yes, the prayer of Jab Jabez, yes, absolutely, enlarge my territory, very much indeed, Bible's full of it, Lazarus, when he was, you know, laying, you know, dead and dying, and the ladies were like, you're late, you're late, he's already dead, he's gone, and there's like, he, and, and, and um, the son of man says, Oh, no, he's just in there sleeping. And what did he do? He said, Lazarus, get up. And that's exactly what happened. And you have to know that, you know, in, in that book, in that work, that spirit lets us know before he left this physical experience, this earthly experience, he said, what? You will go to do greater things than I will. So that's encouraging to us that walk this walk and walk this path that we have, you know, received the go ahead to work for the greater good of people and ourselves. Um, another thing that I want to uh, share with you, and this might be shocking to some, maybe not. Yes, right. Yes, Jesus said to Christ, uh, then Jesus, the Christ said to Lazarus, pick up your bed and walk. You got it. Sure did. And so um, another thing is that you can use for manifestation is sex and masturbation. And let me be very clear about this. Um, this is to be utilized in a positive way. Uh, when you're in the process of having intercourse and you're in the process of masturbation, you're building yourself up to this climax. Yes, exactly. Sacred conjoining. When those bodies get together, there's, there's a whole other situation that's going on above the firmament and in the atmosphere, in the spirit realm, when that happens. That's why you have to be careful about who you let into that space. You have to be very discriminant about who you allow in that space. Because remember, there's a creative energy that's happening at that time. And so when that is happening, what you're thinking and what you're saying during these moments, you're, set, you're setting it on a manifestation platform like no other, yeah. because things are happening in two different realms uh, when you're engaged in this activity. Um, so even in, 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 in masturbation, when you're getting to that point, and if you have the self-control to, at the point of orgasm, speak out what it is that you are manifesting in your life, um, you're, you're resting that manifestation, that intention on top of some real, real power. So that's another thing that is a tool to use for manifestation. The problem is, is that there are a lot of people, women and men alike, who are using that for the very wrong reasons. Yes, very powerful tantric dance. One must be very discerning with whom to allow this level of co-creation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, um, a lot, there, are, there are people out there, because again, with everything, there's a yin and a yang. With everything, there's a good and a bad. Um, there's a positive charge and a negative charge. And so some folks who learn, you know, that this is possible will use that under the wrong circumstances, will use that for selfish intentions. And don't get me wrong, it's okay to have a healthy selfishness about your success. But when it when that other person is not partnering with you and what you're trying to manifest, then that could have some serious repercussions. Um, so I, I totally discourage for you know folks to do that because it will come back. That law of return does not play. Um, and then finally, uh, another tool that you would, or I would encourage 
is um, having other people of like mind to partner with you in what you're trying to manifest for. Now, that's not necessarily required. Um, you can do that very much on your own. But it's, if you have someone else that can partner with you in what you're asking for and what you're believing for, well, two is always better than one. Um, mm -hmm. When two or more are gathered, who's in the midst? Spirit is ready to deliver. Um, so a, a, if that's a prayer partner, like-minded people, um, spiritual light workers like myself and like Alicia uh, or Allie, um, you know, that, that goes into, a, you know, tarot, that goes into root workers. Um, and, and the word root workers, I hate that that has such a negative connotation to it, but I can go into the history of why that is. Um, but I'm glad that people are starting to break away from that, that and understand that root workers simply means utilizing the roots and nature the, the things that have been provided in nature that has the vibration that is necessary to bring your intentions forth. Um, so I'm really starting the next year. I really want to be more of a catalyst for that education on that. But anyway, having um, uh, those root workers or those uh, master manifestors like we are uh, partner with us. Yes, plant medicine, ritualistic ma uh, ritualistic manifestation. Exactly. Uh, uh, Ali, you're on it, sis. You're on it. Thank you. Um, and above all, engage your spirit world. In engage your spiritual team, your spiritual partners, and always remember your ancestors, even if you don't know them. Because the one thing that you have to remember is that in your blood, the blood that courses through your veins is the blood of your mother and father, their mother and father, their mother and father, their mother and father, and it keeps going and going and going and going and going. Well, all of those ancestors reside within you. They reside within your blood right now, and it'll keep going. So, and they are very much interested in our day-to-day -day lives, in our prosperity, uh, in our health. They are very, very interested, have, have a vested interest in us succeeding in those areas. So do not um, forget that you have a legion of them waiting for you, especially if you know that there is an ancestor that has transitioned to the other realm that have special gifts. Like I know I was, uh, I had this course in college and I just couldn't, I couldn't get it. I couldn't break, I couldn't get it. And I remembered I had a very prominent, uh, respected um, educator in my family. I mean, really everybody, I mean, celebrities and the whole nine know, knew him. And I actually went over to my altar and I pulled up his picture and I said, you know what? I said, I know you know this stuff. <laughs> I don't. I'm your mm -hmm. niece. I need help. Please help me. And I just kind of gave it a moment. To have, took a little breathing exercise. And then finally, when I sat back down to be able to write that paper, it just flowed. It flowed. It flowed. It flowed. Allie writes, both sets of sacred helpers love to be of assistance. However, we must invite them to partner with us. Absolutely. They're not coming unless you ask them. And honey, I ask. <laughs> they probably get, I probably get on their nerves, but you better believe <laughs> I absolutely ask. I'll call them out by name, honey. I will do that in a minute. Uh, and and they'll, they'll come to you. I, I know for me, they come in my dreams. I can literally hear them speak sometimes because I'm clear audience. And um, especially when I'm putting things on the altar and I can hear daddy in a minute, you know, don't give me that or pour me more of that gin or whatever he's asking for. <laughs> so just understand, and, and, it's, and it's especially important for people who live more lonelier lives because when you walk this walk, um, and I noticed that when I began this journey and, and coming into this, this space, your friends fall away the people who you think are close to you fall away. And it's because of many, many things. They don't understand. 
uh, they don't like it or they're, they're afraid of it or whatever. I can't worry about that. I, this is my walk that I have to do. And when you're called out, you're called out. Um, but along also in that, I've gained a whole nother family, <laughs> y'all included, uh, of partners in uh, this journey. So I just, when you, when times get tough and you feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're alone and, uh, you know, cause it, it gets like that sometimes, I challenge you, no, I encourage you to get in a space, a quiet space and speak to your ancestors, speak to spirit and you'll be surprised how uplifted, uplifting that will be. Uh, makes me laugh sometimes. Yeah, you're right. It can be a relatively uh, solitary journey, this path we're on, indeed. Um, but you know what? For the first time in my life, I've been able to embrace solitude. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a good thing. All right. So the next thing, switching gears, halfway, well, a little bit more than halfway through. But uh, remember in, in manifesting, remember your environment, right? And so you got to remember the atmosphere and make sure that you set the atmosphere to be prime and ready for you to be able to manifest and ask and make intentions. So uh, again, as above, so below. So you, you're calling things down from the atmosphere down below. So we talked earlier about, um, you know, uh, planetary uh, phases, the moon. Like I said, right now we are in Venus retrograde and honey, that. I'll just leave that there. Um, so back to astrology on that. Um, and then uh, we talked about the moon in the different phases and uh, just being able to uh, make sure that the space, the air around you is purified, you know, burn mm -hmm. you some Palo Santo, burn you some incense, burn you some sage. And you want to make sure that you've done a clean sweep of your space uh, to make sure that it's in a, it, it puts you in the, the, a great vibration of not only giving, but you're also receiving from spirit, all right? Um, and of course, as always, engage the universe, engage the higher power, engage the ancestors. All right, so now let's get into the meat of it. Before I go into that, I want to open it up for any questions, thoughts, ideas, comments. Well, let me see. How much, uh, I was I was just curious. Did yeah. you see my question in the chat? Yeah, I just saw it. Did you start this journey as a child or did you have gifts as a child? Absolutely. <laughs> I come from a family on both sides and that have uh, that are that have all of these different gifts. And I, yes, I was a, a child. And um, and I was a dreamer of dreams, still am you know, could see things happen and have premonitions and bam, they happen. Didn't understand it. Uh, it took um, my grandmother explaining to me, you know, you're a little different. You're going to be a little different than everybody else, you know, but don't be afraid of it. And, um, you know, it, it was just understood in the family. We knew. And then now that I stop and I look back over it, and I look about how she performed in life. Like when we would get sick and stuff like that, she'd go out into the pasture or whatever, come back with something from the ground, grind it up. And next thing you know, we're drinking it and, or eating it or whatever the case. And we feel 100% better. Get a burn or something like that. She went out in nature. Um, the other thing is that, you know, my grandmother and my mom, my, myself, other cousins and aunts and uncles and so forth, uh, I had one aunt that I just learned uh, a month ago that she had the veil removed. And what that means in the spirit realm is that she could not only see the living, but she could see those who had passed on. She could see their mm. energy. She could actually see them. I learned that last uh, two months ago. And I'm like, guys, this is the reason y'all got to talk to us because we're having these same experiences, not knowing that this is being passed down to us. It's, it, this is it's critical that families that experience these things and know these things let their children and their family know because we could be sitting there having and experiencing these things and not understanding it when all along you knew what it was but because you were brought up to think and be told and taught that it was taboo 
that you don't want to bring that up. Well, you're robbing me of this experience. You're robbing me of, of the ability to being able to understand and level up. So yes, as a child, definitely. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what it did, the thing of it is, uh, Tatiana, is that I fought it. Because again, remember, I grew up Pentecostal. And in the church, it was taught that is, you don't, you don't even move in that, that space. But then we have to think about the origin of the Bible and who created it and why. Um, they talk about the Bible being the infallible word of God. Now you're going to give me another space. But how can something be infallible when the people that put it together were, were fallible? You got to understand that even the story in the Bible itself literally came from ancient Kemet, which is Egypt. This, the Bible didn't come until the, what, 1600s, something like that, when they put a book together and gave it to us. I think that's what they did. I think the, the, the actual book, I think it was 1600. So like I said, I, I, I take good things from that, but I've moved from being a religious person to having my own relationship with spirit. And it's been the most rewarding thing in my life. I'll never go back. <laughs> this has been the most rewarding thing of my life. Yes, the Bible is a collection of inspired writings by man. Absolute. Uh, right, that right. Yeah, because think about it. People, you know, all the other religions in the world speak of reincarnation. Even the writings on the wall of, of in, in the pyramids and all that, they all prepared for, you know, the return in some fashion or doing something different after we leave the physical experience. Yet, in, it used to be in the Holy Scriptures, but then someone felt like, uh, and I forget who it was, eh, this isn't really what I'm digging, and I don't think that we should be teaching this, and took it out. See, a lot of people don't even know that. So you're telling me, instead, giving me the fear you know, making me live by fear, you know, of, of, of if you don't do this, then you're going to be damned to hell. No, I'm not. <laughs> what I'm going to do on those lessons that I didn't get, I'm going to have a way to have to come back in some form or fashion or whether that's in another realm and deal with it until I get the lesson right. And then I'll elevate to a different journey. Don't tell me I'm going to be damned to hell. And we, that's what we taught. So yeah, I ran from it because of that and um and spirit is always available to have divine principles and universal truth girl you better preach it that is right <laughs> and so access is downloaded so yeah um yeah so i ran from it until i'll say in 2020 in fact it was the turn of 2020 um literally on new year's day new year's eve I was, they called me clean out. They was like, yeah, we're, we're, that's it. Nope, you're done. And I was supposed to, you know, I was, me and my guy had gotten into it that New Year's Eve and ended up didn't do, not doing anything. And I ended up um, being alone. And next thing you know, I started getting into, just started reading and started seeing things on YouTube that was aligning what my thoughts and beliefs were. And then the next day, my cousin, who lives in Atlanta just calls and say, hey, I'm in town. Gotta come out to see you. She, and, and it was great because I was really lonely. And, um, and so she came by and lo and behold, when she came by, it's when she revealed to me that she had already gone through this passage, but never told anybody because she was afraid to, because we, we both grew up the same way. She thought that I might condemn her. When I, but when I explained to her what I experienced, it was such a beautiful moment because she was like, oh girl, this is great because this is where I am too. And now I've got somebody that I can talk to that understands. You see how spirit works? Call me clean out. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he, spirit, they give you what you need. Okay. All right. Good question. So now. Wow. Uh, may I interject really quickly, yeah, please? Yeah. <clears throat> My spirit is humming right now. My Isn't spirit it? is humming with such elation, Yay. gratitude, appreciation, joy. 
and divine alignment. I'm so grateful that we're having this conversation yeah. and the beautiful company of this collective circle where we're just kind of sharing stories, experiences, yeah. and um, it's so incredibly affirming and powerful and um, it's renewing my, I haven't lost hope, but mm -hmm. it's not often that we can have these conversations right. and every cell of our being is shouting, yes, you know, <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening. And it's not just my cells, it's, it's my spirit. And mm. it's also an aspect of remembrance, you know, oh. where we are coming back together, these disparate parts of ourselves and aspects of our spirit body are awakening and remembering, coming back together, yes. and joining to this divine and sacred yes. And that's just what I wanted to share because you are facilitating through this conversation, this, this beautiful sacred platform um, through the power of modern technology yeah. are actually um, facilitating this process. And I, I thank you for it. So you're so welcome. Acknowledging you. Sending mm -hmm. y'all air hugs like right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, right. Same here. Yeah. Hi, uh, <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so happy to serve. I'm always happy to serve. Yeah. So back in, you know, to going back into um manifesting and how to do this. Remember mind magic. Use your mind to positively mm -hmm. affect your environment and your situation. So remember, we go back to the birthday cake. It was the mind, mm -hmm. it was making of the wish. And then my next thing is mind your mouth. So you'll be able to, you'll, you, you'll have what you say, you know, um, let's think about, I'm going back to the, to, to the Bible again. And in the Bible, in John, first John, I think one and one, it says in the beginning was the word period. It stops right there. And then it goes on to, and the word was God and the word, and the word was with God and the word became flesh. But let's just concentrate on the first part that says in the beginning was the word full stop that in and of itself is so powerful and people miss it it's one of my favorite favorite passages in the book because it tells you right then and there the power of the words that you speak it says that the power can be a two-edged sword that you can speak blessings and curses upon your life so mind your mouth and be able to speak what you will into your life. Understand that words matter. Understand the power in the spoken word. When you speak anything, it is out there left to be taken up for manifestation. Mm -hmm. And we have to always give an account to what we say. And the good thing about it is we're able to cancel things down that when we say things that we don't want to or don't need to or shouldn't say, because trust and believe, I've had to come back and say, okay, spirit, that is not what I meant. That is not what I wanted to say. I denounce what I just said and let it crumble to the, to the ground un unaffected. So I'm, I'm giving instruction to the word that I spoke in error or in, in anger or whatever. And I'm telling that word that has to, that it has to fail. So understand that you have the ability to do that. Don't think for one second when you say it, oh, that's it. Oh my God, it's gonna happen. You have the ability to call that thing back in. And so uh, I see a hand raised, yeah. Thank you, beloved. Can you? repeat what you just shared. I denounce what I just said and allow it to crumble back to the earth. What did you, can you clarify that please? Yeah, so, so, you know, I, 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 I denounced the words that I just said, that I just spoke mm -hmm. and may it crumble to the earth. Uh, I think I said unaffected or without effect. Yes, unaffected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I, I, did, that. I took the power out of what I said, because if I don't, there is a huge, huge chance that what I said will manifest. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you for absolute sure that I have said some things, very detrimental and deadly things 
and ma'am, they have happened. And it was at that moment I realized the power of my words. Awesome. Thank I'm you. not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still, you know, having this human experience. Mm -hmm. So I may not always get it right, but you better believe I got, a, I got those soldiers on the other side that will, they'll get me in my sleep. Mm -hmm. They'll do whatever they got to and say, you sure you want to, you want to leave that out there? Mm -hmm. And then I'll have to say, okay, I'm sorry. You know, I'm mad. You know how I get when I get upset. <laughs> <laughs> But luckily, a lot of, I, I, I do believe that when we say things, they know, they know if we really, really mean it, um, especially when it goes too far. Um, but I don't want to run the risk of whatever energy picks it up and say, hmm, this sounds good. Think I might go do it. No, <laughs> don't want to run the risk. Hey, Nicole, what you got? Yes, uh, I just wanted to say that I learned a lot this evening Good. Uh, in this, in this um, meeting. Um, I think before about my you know, just in general, I learned more than I ever knew. And I to thank you for sharing You're very and having welcome. this meeting. <laughs> it was very, very educational. You're very, very, very welcome. You're very, very welcome. That's what it's here for. So mind your mouth, because karma will serve what you deserve. <laughs> and then mind your mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. And remember that the mind is the catalyst of your vibration. So mind your mind. So how do you, at the end, total wrap this little puppy up? The way that you manifest is you think it, you see it, you say it, and you write it because sometimes when you, I added the write it right on as an added piece, but I like to write things down and the right is a, if you want to, but let's go back to the Bible again in Habakkuk two and two, another one of my favorite passages that I have on my wall, write it and make it plain. Let me go to it. Write it and make it plain. I'll read it verbatim. And the Lord answered unto me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not tarry. I got chill bumps. It is my favorite. Girl, let me tell you something. That right there has brought me through a whole lot. That's why I said just as much as you can speak things, you can write that thing down. I have a book where I write different things down that I need for spirit to do in my life and that I want to have done. I'll give it to you in just a minute, Alan. And, um, and I write that down and I leave it there. And I can tell you for sure, I, 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 there's the day that I always go back and I check something off. I check it off. The uh, scripture is Habakkuk 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Habakkuk, H-A-B-A-B-K-K-U-K. Those folks who are talking about scripting and writing, uh, this is where that comes from. Mm -hmm. This is where that comes from. This is exactly where that comes from. All right. So, um, uh, wow. yeah, I had something else I'd like to, to throw into the circle, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I'm, I'm like literally rocking with, um, <laughs> divine acknowledgement. You know how your body is yeah. literally just kind of rocking back and forth. And, um, it, it's just such yeah. a delicious conversation. Thank you so yeah. much. And <laughs> I wanted to also share because spirit kept nudging me to speak up, speak up when yeah. you said, <laughs> and I'm obedient to spirit always, always. Always, you mentioned be able to speak what you will. Mm -hmm. And as I wrote that, spirit kind of pulled me to like, you know, tugged on my uh, not coattails, but it just got my attention and kept nudging me to pause. And you mentioned you grew up Pentecostal. So mm -hmm. you and I don't know who, who else on the line may be familiar with the word Selah. Yes, Selah. <laughs> 
It yes. was a say la moment, right? Yes. I had to take it in. I know. It was a say la <laughs> moment. I had to take it in because I also did the, um, it's a creative license to pull up the definition of will. And it says the mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses or decides Ooh. upon a course of action, Ooh. diligent purposefulness, determination. Diligent. It also speaks to, um, to decide or intend, let's see, to exercise the will, to make a choice or choose. So bearing or attitude towards others, disposition. So when you said, be able to speak what you will, mm. it's, it's both what you choose and what one is deliberately intending, wishing to create, you know, to carry forth, to bear in a forward action. And so I think that's really important to realize. It seems like a simple, oh, well, you know, just be able to speak what you will kind of willy nilly. However, there's such power in that phrase and the phraseology of that. I just wanted to, you know, bring our attention to that. Indeed. And I hope that you will, will, um, post that, what you just said, your position mm -hmm. on that in the group, sure. uh, for us to meditate on, mm -hmm. uh, over these next few days, please do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here in the chat or in the group? Uh -uh, the I want it in the, I want it in the Comment. main group page. <laughs> All right. It's done. Consider and it any, done. Anytime you feel like you want to give on that, this is a group effort. Feel free. Yes, thank you, you, Nicole, both, all of you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to button this little bad boy up so I can let you guys go and retire to your day. But at the end of the, the day, um, you make the call on your life and life is, you know, an experience based on our choices and we have autonomy over our own success. And so just put in, just remember that to put in the work to support your intention, uh, biblically faith without works is dead. I'll leave it right there on that. So Put out your intentions and you fortify that and back that up by I'm going to show you that I believe it's coming because I'm going to prepare for it by doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just also be cognizant of positive and negative charges. When your day gets down, remember, don't, don't get into that vibe. Try to find a way to pull yourself around. We're human. We will have those times, but always seek out that silver lining. And Last but not least, in all you're getting, get understanding. Um, go with that gut. And it's okay to be selfish about your success. And the best way, one of the best ways to really uh, pull things in, into your life is to bless others, to do for others, to, you know, pour into others, to, to, um, you help others build, you know, blessing, bless others to be blessed. Uh, that's part of the law of, the re of return. In the spirit realm, um, they rely on, um, on this exchange platform. You give to get back. That's the way that, that, that works. And, um, and above all, it just builds your karmic bank with good stuff. Because remember, karma always pays. It always pays what you put in. So it builds your karmic bank. Um, and so those are ways of manifesting without even having to go through any ritualistic um, uh, actions or anything like that. Just by just giving and, and blessing others and encouraging others. Um, and then uh, you'll reap a harvest beyond that. So if there's nothing else, this has been a blessing to me. Uh, I'm grateful for all of you on here and within the group. Um, if you know you all need anything of me, um, of course, feel free to reach out to me uh, on here on a meetup or my email, which is blueyamojai at gmail. Uh, I do have my website, uh, which is uh, theemperorspeaks.com. I think that's what I am. And you can kind of see some of the things that, that I um, support with, with my clients. And um, I think that is all. Yes, Habakkuk 2, 2-3. Two you got it. Anything further? 
Absolutely. I'd like to say something. Yeah. <clears throat> when I was um, perusing groups to feel a sense of alignment with when uh, meet up, I came across the artwork. So let me just say, I didn't know what a blue emoji was. Uh -huh. <laughs> However, my spirit did. Mm. I cannot tell you the chills and I've been getting these chills for probably at least a decade. Whenever I would hear um, the Orishas through uh, Ifa, and so especially Oshun, you know, whenever yeah. I'd hear that, I mean, that deity, the powerful energy within the name, I would get mm. literally bathed in God bumps, you know, and so yeah. the same happened as soon as I saw the artwork in red, blue Yemoja, uh -huh. and I'm like, wait a minute, that's got to be something mm -hmm. with that the energy is Oshun. Like, what is that? What is that? I didn't know. As soon as I looked it up with all the, it was just exquisite. And I just wanted to wow. share with you that even before I read a word, my <laughs> spirit was pinging on the artwork, the name, Blue Yemoja. And when I read it, I just, I could not stop. I just literally dove into mm. breathing in this, this, this Orisha. It was just so powerful. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to acknowledge that there is sometimes and oftentimes, especially if we are open, receptive and tuned and tapped and turned on to being in kind of like um i want to say something about like this honing signal like if our inner gps is mm. on a target that is in alignment with wow. our highest and best good mm -hmm. it's almost like da -da -da -da, scanning it's scanning and right. then when it locks onto something it's like you know we get that confirmation and i i thank you for fashioning everything as you have and I knew this would be a treat for the spirit oh. and the soul. And um, I just, I look forward to unpacking this with you and with the others, Nicole, Tatiana, I'm really grateful for each of you as well. Yeah. Um, Divine Queen, Blue Ye Moja, I'm so, so <laughs> grateful for you and for having this platform yeah. and for sharing as you have. I am eternally grateful. So oh. thank you. Thank you. You just really blessed my spirit. I'm just, I'm just, I'm so grateful for you both. Iron sharpens iron. And so yeah, I will true. continue to lean on both of you and others in the group. Yeah. Uh, Nicole, Tatiana, all of you. Thank um, you. as I grow in this, in this process, I just, I just want the, I want everyone to just have their best experience now. Yes. We don't have to wait for it. We can have our best experience right now. That's right. That's I love right. you all to bits. And mm -hmm. I hope that y'all have a beautiful rest of your week. Thank you. Thank we you. receive that you. blessing you. on each of you. <laughs> Just sending sisterly love yes. and uh, upliftment and uh, huh, compassionate acknowledgement, you know, and uh, I, I just, I'm very grateful that I, I chose to invest myself in this group this evening. So thank you. Likewise. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been a real blessing and journey. I'm new to this, but it's always been something that I've been trying to really nurture. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm Haitian, so I have a lot of hey, spiritual. Hey, I'm a boule. Hey. Hey. <laughs> My ex-husband was, was Haitian. We're going to do a lot of talking, girl. Oh, wonderful. Hey. Wonderful. And I have, a I have a father who's extremely spiritual, but, you know, that side has always been shunned. Yeah. But, know. but it's important. interesting. Um, I think uh, I also have basically an aunt who literally just this passed away, and she was very spiritual as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this is a time for me to go back to the ancestors and yeah. really look into it a little bit more yeah so yeah. yeah i'm looking forward to it but i'm new <laughs> yeah, well you know what we'll walk the walk together yeah awesome. we'll walk, walk together it's 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 a it's a daily it's it's just a daily journey and we're here we will walk it together awesome i'm looking awesome. forward to it thank you so much you're so hey. welcome and like i said if y'all have any um 
ideas as far as any other sessions that you'd like to host, uh, or even if y'all want to host a session yourselves, this is a group effort. <laughs> Yay. I feel that so strongly. And I, I definitely believe in the power of community. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate you inviting us to contribute and, and make this our group, you know, yeah. and um, it has such amazingly transcendent energy already. I, I just, I felt that pouring, streaming, pulsating from the, not the page, but the screen, you know, as I was reading about it. And um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to what comes next and to supporting you in unfolding so that we can unpack each and every one of us because a tide rises all boats that's right that's mm -hmm. right thank you i love oh. your altar by the way this is a beautiful photo of it oh, i know it's a portion of mm -hmm. yep yeah, yeah i'll have to um, see if i can post a video or something and see the whole thing it's really it's, it's a lot <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but cool. why not why not <laughs> yeah, why not why not yeah. the time is now i'm that's just right. excited that's right Thank All you. right, awesome. I will go ahead and end it here and we will connect soon. Awesome, sounds good. Thank so we'll just you. continue to watch the page to see when you may yeah. do yeah. another one, another group. Yep, yep, yep. I'll okay. just, I'll put something out there as spirit gives it to me. I understand that too. Wonderful. Okay, terrific. Right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Take good care, everyone. Be well. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right. Be, one. Be well you. and blessings to everyone. Bye. Thank Thank you. Bye. All right. Peace. <laughs> Wow. Yeah,